Okay, um... Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. All depends the part of the world you are joining us from. I am Mazichika Austin, and I believe um, we are coming out loud and clear. Also, I would want you to notify us how better we are coming out how audible we are with respect to the audio voice and also how clear we are in respect to the visual we have some couple of things to talk about but before we go to that i wanna i want to apologize sincerely for um our late responses, our late postings uh, this time around, or within some, uh, within this short, uh, or some days now, it wasn't a deliberate one, and uh, we are doing our best to, to fall back better. And I'm, uh, I'm positive we are falling out, falling back better for, you know, an improved information and uh, what have you. So, if you check, okay, somebody has just uh, informed us that uh, we are coming out loud and clear. Uh, thank you so much, Joseph Onyedekachi. I I really appreciate that quick response. So you have to share this program. Very very important to share the program because it's informative. What we are sharing this moment is information, education, and uh, what have you. Um, most of us must have been acquainted with the ongoing political developments uh, in Nigeria, most especially the one that is trending, that uh, everyone seems to be worried and concerned about, you know, the mantra of regional government, uh, the move by the Tunubu's government to establish or should i say bring nigerian back nigeria back to regional system um at the surface talking about the at the level of media mainstream media um what you would naturally hear is just passive information you know information that are within the mainstream level because remember the media is heavily funded not just by domestic actors also by international actors a lot of media platforms you you know are under you know the sponsorship of certain powers and certain authorities so you should understand what that means. You see, when we when we try to think outside the boss, we are thinking outside the mainstream posture. We are thinking outside the passive understandings or what people know. So we are so so, so what we are trying to say is this you shouldn't expect mainstream approach on today's topic you shouldn't expect um the way the media have fed you the mainstream media must have fed you you know how they might have configured you to think about the ongoing political development because uh, we are not mainstream minds and we refuse to be one of any anything close to mainstream mind 
So we are talking about the ongoing debate on regional government. But first of all, we cannot appreciate this talk, we cannot appreciate this program or this topic if we negate a historical perspective to it. If we must understand what is going on today, if we must understand the politics of regional government today, then we must be liberal, we must be open enough in our minds to take a journey to history. Because it is in the history, activities of yesterdays, we can be able to, you know, phantom the realities on ground. So what am I trying to say? Uh, people tend to, you know, look at the ongoing regional government as something that is new. It's never new. It's never a child of today. In fact, as a matter of fact, Nigeria had invested more time in regional system or what looks like a regional government than the time she has spent in federal system. Uh, some people also argue that Nigeria have never practiced federalism. Rather, what Nigeria have been practicing is unitary system, which has to do with high concentration of power on the center. So if you also look at their evidences of facts, you, you can as well agree that Nigeria is more of a unitary system than regional, uh, than federal system. So but what we are trying to say is that Nigeria have spent more years practicing what seem to be regional government than what it seem to be uh, the, the current political system she finds herself into. Take for instance, if you look at Nigeria from 1900, 1900, which is the early beginning of 20th century, um, you find out that Nigeria was more of a regional system. You have the the eastern, in fact, southern proletariats, uh, you know, and northern proletariats. So the north we are managing the affairs. They were running every single decisions of theirs according to their sociocultural way of life. That system we are there. The systems we are there. In the north, you had a system that suits their feudal system. If you look at from 1900, the reason why we always push back to history is because if you don't look at history, definitely you're going to make a whole lot of mistakes. That is one thing people do not understand. And that's why the imperialist powers make sure that you don't get closer to history because they understand that any time you are passionate about history you're passionate about discovery there's no two ways about it and that is why if you look at the current agitation for self-determination being championed by the IPOB you would agree with me that what makes the movement unique is because of the passion of the leadership to be abreast with history. Because if you don't understand history, if you don't have passion for history, definitely you're going, you're going to make a whole lot of mistakes. And sometimes the mistakes are going to be highly, highly costly. So. What we are trying to say today is this. Nigeria in time passed from 1900 to sometime, um, you know, let me say um, 1914, which is the amalgamation, amalgamation era, the time the northern and southern proletariats were amalgamated. Nigeria have never been a country that was run on the current political 
composition. It has never been that. But let me tell us something. Because every action has a purpose. But before I say that, I want you to understand something. That Nigeria is an athlete for the Western powers. Nigeria was created by the West. Run by the West. And it also takes the West or something. In fact, it also take, takes the West to end Nigeria. Or Nigeria will end when the Western power is on the decline. I want you to understand something. Whosoever that finds a project, an initiator of a project, have the power to collapse the project. That is just the way it is. Either if any other party or a third party is to destroy that project, it means that the initiator of that project must have be weakened. That is just the way it is. So Nigeria as a country is a product of the West managed by the West, and it also takes two factors. One factor is the West deciding to collapse it, or the West getting weakened, that they cannot manage extensively where they have commitments. So if you understand that submission, then we can now roll into the real discussion. So, like I said, Nigeria was two separate countries, Northern Protectorates and Southern Protectorates. That was how Britain initially initiated it. Britain had the idea of, let's just have two countries. The Northern country and southern country. Originally, Britain never wanted to have a country that comprises the northern and southern. No, no, that has never been the decision. So, the amalgamation of 1914, British decision to amalgamate these two separate entities, separate in culture, separate in language, separate in in religion, separate in every facet of separation. Britain decided to bring them together for two main reasons. Take note of this. One, the French were expanding towards the north, especially the Chad Basin. During the colonial time, French was almost penetrating down to Adamawa, Yobe, Casina, Sokoto. So Britain now felt that if care is not taken, French colonialists might advance as the point of taking the entire north. Because already, at the neighborhood of Northern Protectorates at that time, you see Nigel and Chad, they were all under French colonies. They were all French colonies. So Britain felt, if we don't inform the, uh, the, the French people that this, these people are one, this is the one country we have found, that there are possibilities that the French will expand to the point of encroaching in other you know, parts of the north. As a matter of fact, there are people of present Casina, even people of Adamawa, that are in Cameroon. There is Adamawa in Cameroon. There is Casina in Niger. There is Sokoto in Niger. So Britain came up with the idea, okay, let us bring these people together so that we can use the resources we are getting from the south and see if we can 
encourage these people. Let us use what we are getting from the south, south and push to the north so that even the northerners will be interested to join us instead of the French people. So, what am I trying to make you understand here? I'm trying to make you understand that the amalgamation of 1914 was not done for the development of the indigenous people, rather for the betterment of British interests and policies. Because when people, when you, when you hear people talking about, uh, when, when you hear people say, you know, um, that God gave them Nigeria, you know, God, God gave them, he, 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 you shouldn't go far to understand the level of deplorable mind such fellow possesses. That should make you understand how deplorable such person you, you should in fact as a matter of fact that should be a yastic to understanding the level of such person's rational thinking the capacity of his or her breath because if you look at it from historical point of view nigerians should worship britain as their god more because by creation the mecca of the country called Nigeria is Britain. So if there is any God that gave us Nigeria, it's Britain. It's, the, it's Britain. Britain is the deity that should be worshipped. People might not be comfortable with that submission, but that is the reality. You cannot detest fact. But I should find a way to, to, to accommodate it. So, then, as time keeps on growing, um, you know, Britain began to see the need to, to you know, um, destroy the indigenous identities. Because, you see, one of those things Britain did in Nigeria is to create a dual identity, which I'm going to explain. I think uh, uh, Mazawala Kago is one of the best guys who who talk about identity factor in 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 African history. So, but I I I I, I want us to I want us to understand something. You see, the best way to destroy an idea is to create what we call dualism. I don't really want, I, I wouldn't want this program to be more of academic or intellectual stuff. So I will try as much as possible to step down as much as I can so that everybody can understand and be carried away. So the best way to corrupt an idea or to destroy an idea is to create what you call parallel idea. You see, if you want to destroy your original, introduce fake. Fake has to contend with the original. And in so doing, people will be confused, not knowing they want to chase, whether fake or original. So one of those ways Britain destroyed the minds of the indigenous people in Nigeria, whether you call it the Hausa indigenous people, whether you call it the Yoruba indigenous people, the Ijo indigenous, whether you call it the Igbo, the Anang, and what have you, the Ibira, the Ibira, name them. One of those ways Britain destroyed every one of these people and many more of them that I could, I could not mention was to introduce dual identity there is this identity called primordial identity is my postulation what is primordial identity according to my postulation so that you wouldn't want to start goggling to look at primordial identity this is my own submission primordial identity is your unique identity your indigenous identity 
your indigenous identity is unique to you. For instance, I'm born Igbo. In fact, the day I was born, the land, the ecosystem, everything about my indigenous identity smile for the addition and that is also applicable to every one of us but what britain did was in order to destroy these people let us introduce a secondary identity to them and what is that secondary identity the identity of nigeria the identity of nigeria now, let me tell you one shocking thing you should understand here. Why the people we are ignorantly discarding their primary identity? Britain, in the other hand, was busy funding for promotion of the secondary identity. How? If you want to, if you want to say somebody is patriotic. I cannot be called a patriotic Igbo man. There is no word like that. And I don't think any of you have ever heard the word a patriotic Yoruba man, a patriotic Hausa man. No, 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 no. But what do you hear? You hear languages like patriotic Nigeria. All those languages were psychological weapons built, presented by Britain to make people to be in rush to get a badge or an accolade that promotes secondary identity that is even detrimental to the people. It's a, it's a, it's a psychological weapon. In fact, it's more destructive than weapon of mass destruction. So, now, look at what they did. They work on the minds of these people because everything the imperialists were targeting was to destroy Liu, Liu Yu. Now they now came up with certain languages, very powerful. Most of you do not know. When you are promoting that secondary identity, the British created identity, which is Nigeria. They say, "Oh, wonderful! He's patriotic. Let's give him O O N. Let's give fly him. Let let's recognize him as blah blah blah." that immediately you are preserving the primary identity, which is your indigenous identity. Do you know what they call it? Tribalistic. Egocentric. Ethnocentric. Blah, blah, blah. All manners of Malayan languages. And those who were ignorant, those whose brains are fable to understand what psychological war is all about, we quickly drop it. And that's why people find it difficult to defend their ethnic identity because they believe associating into such honorable move will get you all manners of stupid concussions and names. It's all over the place. And let me tell you something that will shock you. Because Britain understood that no ethnic nationality in Nigeria is worthy to work with, except the Fuller group, which is the Fulani group. Britain never trusted Aosa. In fact, they wrote in their book that the Aosa people are stupid, that they are unwise. The Yoruba, Britain said they are very subtle, very, you know... You know, very unstable and all this. And of course, you, you know what they wrote about the Igbos. So the only people Britain was, you know, uh, disposed to work with was the Fulanese. And that was for, they did that for a purpose. They understand that the Fulanese, being unsettled people, wanderers, that they can never drive a capitalist mindset. 
Because they, they, they study the history of the Fulanis and know that the Fulanis who have been wandering from Futajalo all throughout several centuries, even till tomorrow, are still struggling to find a settlement. That's why you cannot say this is Fulani community. What you hear is Fulani settlement. Till tomorrow. Till tomorrow. And Britain loves them because they settle within a short time and continue. So they, they cannot drive market economy. They cannot initiate a process of development. And do you know what? Why Britain encourage every other ethnic nationality in Nigeria to hate their own ethnic identity? Britain encouraged Fulani to love their own ethnic identity. And that's why Zamfara is owned by the Hausa people. You will see Hausa people preaching patriotism, which should be centered on loving whatever identity Nigerian present. You see an Hausa man preaching even against Hausa indigenous identity. You go to Yoruba, or their Ellis. When you talk about Yoruba Ellis, you find out that they are Ellis and mainstream minds. All of them are also talking about eh, Nigeria. Nobody is talking about Odudua. It's a taboo. None of them wants to associate with their ethnic identity. It's a shameful thing to do. So, when you are educated, you are educated to advance the British identity called Nigerian identity against your God's given identity because nobody was born in Nigeria you are born if you are born in Anang you are born as an Anang there is no language called Nigerian language the only language called Nigerian language is English language and who owns English of course Britain is also a weapon of psychological manipulations Is there any food called Nigerian food? Absolutely not. If you talk about Abu, it's an Igbo food. If you talk about Tuo Shinkafa, it's Hausa Fulani food. If you talk about a Wedu, it's a Yoruba's food. There's no food called Nigerian food. The only thing you can call Nigerian food is the poison brigade is just pushing in the market. The toxic. So, what Britain did was to encourage these people to hate. So, the competition, the drive to maintain this, you know, Artificial identity, called Nigerian identity, began to lead to a problem. And those who are patriotic in terms of trying to preserve their ethnic identity are called Omana Sofne. They are called tribalists. And this is the common languages you hear an average educated Nigerian, whenever he wants to express his or her understanding of one's protectionist idea he will say oh he's a tribalist even somebody who is calling a tribalist doesn't know anything about the world the person is using so that is what it is so what are we trying to say if you watch from 19 1900 to 1966, you would agree with me that Nigeria did everything to run on every part being what they are. Because at that moment, you see, at that moment, the international choice of the imperialist or the Western power was to bring 
the ethnic nationalities in Nigeria together. Not because they want to better the lives of the indigenous people. Take note for that. But because they want to sustain Western interest. So when people talk about Nigeria, Nigeria is just a created entity for sustainability of Western interest. That's why Dangote told you. Most of you have never read what Dangote said recently. Dangote said they called him from Sudan, what is it called? Saudi Arabia, when he was about building a refinery, and said he should stop that. Dangote wanted to build a refinery, and threats were coming from outside Nigeria that he shouldn't build a refinery. Why? So that Nigerian petroleum consumption will depend on foreign refineries. That is it. You see, when people say they are defending Nigeria, they are, they are naive. That is the country you are defending. That is the entity you are making noise about because of lack of education, or should I say, lack of idea way of thinking. As big as Dangote is being threatened, if not that he dared, even when Dangote established the refinery, they also refused to sell crude for him in Nigeria. Even when he built the refinery, for local consumption, for the betterment of, to push down liquidation of foreign reserve, to help the Naira, they even deny him, denied him access to the locally produced crude. That he has to now run. You see, these guys, they put up a system that the only thing that can salvage the life of an ordinary person in Nigeria is the collapse of the entity. Because they have designed a system that it doesn't matter how foolish you are, whether you want to be a pro-Nigeria or anti-Nigeria, the truth remains. Fact cannot be just swept under the carpet. You see what they did? They threatened Dangote not to build a refinery, from overseas. He went ahead and built it. They put pressure to government officials in Nigeria not to sell crude oil to him. And where did he run to get the crude oil? To US. So the same thing he's running away, they have also used the local players to get him back. The same thing they did to Nyema of APs. They warned him not to open an international route. He tried flying into UAE. They frustrated him, got him off there. He tried the UK. And what they did was, when the, the first flight, the premier flight that did the trip was coming, they almost denied the flight access, landing access. So what happened? Why am I painting picture of two persons? Dangote is from a north, and from north. Onyema is from uh, east. You see, they don't care the area you're coming out from. Any move you're making to enhance the lives of Nigerians, for instance, the imperialists destroy it. Whether you're from north, like Dangote, you're from East, like Onyema, is inconsequential. Because they have designed and believed that Nigeria is their inheritance. So what they now did was get elements. Most of you do not understand. In fact, they are going as far now as because they understood that people have people are now in a serious monitoring of uh, what the Fulanese are doing, which is their house niggers. What they are not trying to do, they are not a kind of building a block, a group. It is picking people from all ethnic nationalities and telling them to push 
for a certain narrative. And of course, people will fall for it. So what are we trying to say? British was pushing, creating Nigeria for a purpose for her own betterment. Is managing Nigeria for her own betterment. No two ways about it. No two ways about it. Because they understand that it's not only natural resources they are taking from Nigeria, they also taking human resources. As a, most people in, in UK who went to study, what are they doing? Caregiving. Jobs that British citizens cannot do. Of course, when I talk about British citizens, I'm talking about white British citizens. Cannot do. They come here, bring a visa policy, and ship you. You might, you might be reading about slave trade and uh, say, ah, your fathers did not do enough to fight them back. But today, you're also undergoing the same slave system. It's still the same way. Because you get to UK, they tell you, you have to go and clean the ass of their old people. You can see what is happening in France today. France is almost collapsing. Why? Because things they are getting from those African countries, Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali, Senegal, you know, Chad, are being stripped off. And that is exactly what Britain is afraid of. That all this regional government you are hearing, regional this, it is the British that is pushing it. It's the British that is pushing it, which I'm going to explain to you further. Please, you have to share this program. Very, very important. So that people can be informed. So, in 1966, for those of you who were not aware, Nigeria ended regional system. Like I told you, the every system British in, pushes Nigeria to, or configures Nigeria into, she does that based on international reality of that time. Not because she loves you. Why am I saying this? Because people hear about regional government. Uh, some people are confused anyway. But um, people, you just have to understand it. Every single international system, so every single com configuration Britain is introducing in Nigeria through process, as a matter of fact, they don't come directly and say, they always use indigenous tools for that. Every single configuration is aimed based on the international system of that time. Like I told you people, French was advancing from Niger, Chad, and they started talking about unification of northern and southern protectorates. Yes. They never amalgamated Nigeria because they want a better Nigeria that would no, no, no. They wanted to curtail the advancement of the French people from northeast, or should I say northwest. That was why they initiated amalgamation. And also the 1966, sorry, 1967 idea of what they have today. They also introduced go on into the they push go on into it because they want to curtail the unity that was seen amongst the people of the old eastern region aka the biafran people and they talk go on announce announce federalism announce federalism they told them they said, introduce federalism in 1967 so that the people of the East can be weakened. They created River State and created Cross River and told those people, you are not the same with these people. They cajole them, persist them. Yes. 
Yes. And you should ask yourself, the creation of this to say, has it better the lives of people of those regions? Absolutely. The answer is no. Have it stopped British exploitation? You should know what happened in Ogoni. You should know what happened in Uti. You should know what happened in Brass. You should know what happened in Nembe. You should know what happened in uh, was it? Okrek and all the rest of them. Till tomorrow, there is still high environmental degradation in all these places. So they never even initiated the 1967 structure for the love of the people. No, they never. They did that because British interest was at stake. And today, for your information, Britain is also pushing a narrative known as regionalism. And that is the last thing we talk about before we come to the end of this program. We are making 40 minutes already. Now, another international system is surfacing. Another global system is uh, steering before we all. And that global system that is steering before we all is this. Unlike 1914, the French colonialists were advancing towards not. We are on the contemporary age period. We are Russians are advancing not only in the northern region, they are also advancing on the Gulf of Guinea, formerly known as Bite of Biafra. And uh, Britain is on ease with that. Britain is not is unsettled with that. The collective West are panicking. And they are deciding to introduce a child of necessity. The regional system you're seeing now is a child of necessity. They are considering what is happening within the geopolitical space. And they are under, also concerned that internally they have a structure known as IPOB that is severely refusing to die. Despite the introduction of infiltrators, despite every effort to malign them, they refuse to give up. And Britain is not finding it funny. Let me tell you what is going on, if you're interested to know. Britain have come to the realization that if nothing is done, not just done, done speedily, there is every possibility of her losing absolutely the entire Nigerian political space or social political space. And that is a worry. That is a concern. If you watch the speed of regional bill, no Nigerian discussion have gotten so speed before. Now, what is Britain planning? Britain is initiating a regional government so that um, to see if um, they can divide opinion. Because regional government they are pushing could be said to be option option two. You know, United States government is of the opinion that IPOB should be constructively engaged. That is the position of US. Nobody might tell you this. US believes that IPOB should be engaged. You know. But the Nigerian government is afraid of engaging IPOB because they've never seen a clear light that the wrong guys have hijacked the movement. They have not seen it. They are not stupid. Every effort by certain forces to hijack it failed. And to them, they, they believe that uh, certain forces have not been able to establish a level of control to the movement. And because of that, engaging such a movement means you're going to have a fierce and extensive negotiation process. You know, Nigerian elites are very, they are very impatient. They want everything, fire brigade, let them have their one mover. But uh, they, they believe that uh, the current the current you know um disposition the current 
state of IPOB does not uh, there is no sign that there are foolish people to engage with and because of that they are very very careful extremely careful not to engage and on the second thought America is also letting Britain to understand the importance of putting pressure on the Nigerian government to go back to regional system and what, what is the initiative what is the purpose of this? The West are worried that if nothing is done and done quickly, they are going to lose the entire Nigeria. They don't trust Nigerian politicians because Nigerian politicians are very, very idealist elements I've ever seen. They don't have any single idea they believe in. If PDP comes to the, all of them will massively cross carpet. If uh, APC come, they will, so they don't have, you cannot group them to be conservative or liberals. No Nigerian politician that has an ideology that he believes in. The only ideology they believe, loot, steal, nothing else. So, and the West is afraid that these guys might be penetrated tomorrow by their opponent the BRICS group, the Russian group, and they will lose out. So they are not putting pressure on the politicians to put a regional system at work. Now, let me tell you, I will also tell you something they don't know that are likely going to happen. Now, the essence of regional system is this. They want to achieve what they achieve in Iraq. In Nigeria. I'm going to explain what that means. In Iraq, something happened in Iraq. Iraq was almost a highly centralized country. They began to see that uh, they have a fallout with Sa Saddam Hussein, late Saddam Hussein. The West began to see that Saddam Hussein, who happens to be their friend, because they used Saddam Hussein to fight the Iranians in the 80s. Remember Iran Iraq war. They used Saddam Hussein to fight the Iran Iranian. And at a time, Saddam Hussein, because of the arms the West supplied to him, he felt he be, he's not powerful. And he decided to go against Western interest, uh, interest in Kuwait. That is uh, the Kuwait war, you know. Uh, he invaded or she did, he entered Kuwait. I wouldn't say invasion anyway. And the West told him that that is the George Bush Sr. was the president there. Never find that. That, that never find that to be funny. They told him the action you're taking is not funny. And Saddam Hussein felt after all, you know, see finish is very powerful. You know, when people say see finish, they have seen, Saddam Hussein has seen them finish because they used him against the Iranians. And he, after he had a, a coffee table with them. So he knows them and they also know him, knew him. He knew them and also they also knew him. So when he now decided to enter Kuwait, they told him what he was doing was not really funny. And you know, America, America took up Operation Desert Storm, if you remember that operation, and dislodged him. And because they felt that Saddam Hussein, who happens to be their boy, seemed to be playing towards East, what they now did, they said, let us create a system in Iraq that even though Iraq is going to go towards East, it will not be the entire Iraq. Do you know what they did in Iraq? They created a regional system in Iraq. That's why in Iraq you have the Kurdish region and other regions. So why the central Iraqi government is a pro-Russia, is a pro-Brics, the Kurdish region is a pro-West, is a friend of Israel, is a friend of America. So they want to, the same templates they use in Iraq, that's what they want to use. 
in Nigeria. They are afraid they might lose everything. So they are now putting up a pressure for a system to be designed so that every region can stay on its own and manage in so doing. Even though paraventure Russia makes friendship with a part, them too will have a part that can be their friends. And that is exactly what they are extensively designing or pushing for. But let me tell you some things they never understood because um, it is usually said I got the one in a check or a serial who never who never a check or a serial who I got for for those of you who do not understand the word is an Igbo adage that says uh, an aged woman is thinking about how to eat a certain local yam. The same local yam is thinking how to cause stomach porch or stomach egg on the aged woman. So, so then why they are pushing for this? Because they don't want to lose out. They don't want an absolute loss. There is something they never knew. And that brings us to what happened in the defunct USSR. For those of you who do not know, something happened in USSR, the defunct USSR, talking about Soviet Union. You see, any time there is a process to crack a system, take note of this. You can decide a point at which you want to start the cracking, but you cannot decide where the cracking will end. That is what thing, this is one of the things nature has strongly established. You can decide how a process starts, but you cannot you are, absol you are absolutely not in control to decide how that process ends. Nature has perfected this submission. You see, if you look at the defunct USSR, it was highly centralized, just like Nigeria. It was highly centralized society, highly unitralized. But the day they introduced the concept of regional system in USSR, a kind of restructure system that was that process led to the collapse of the entire area and that's exactly what is going to play out in nigeria because most of you are not talking ah let me tell you you see the regionalism bill is just do you know what that proposal is for those of you who have read it some people are telling me uh explain this explain this do you know what that proposal do, proposal document what it is it is just like uh, a soft pepper that is going to be lighted when it's lighted and it will taken to fill station then it blow up everything that is what that document is all about because most of you do not understand it's not it is only going to instigate the debate that will now bring the bigger debate. For those of you who are too hasty to, you know, have a federalist interpretation of idea, I mean, a comprehensive interpretation of idea, sometimes it's not a healthy one. The process we are seeing going is going to be a very disturbing explosion. The not are taking time to you know, sitting back to understudy everything in order to come out with their own. Make no mistake, too. Other regions are also... <laughs> you cannot impose. You have to understand this. You cannot impose. In fact, today not. That proposal is seen as an Oduduwa proposal. That is, if you listen to key northern opinion makers they are seeing that document as purely oduduwa document 
In fact, to them, instead of Nigeria to go to regional system, let them walk away. So, the government is uh, pressing a button that is going to skyrocket a major debate and issue. But the truth is, to the Yorubas, they see it that this is the opportunity. They can miss it out. And they don't care. For those of you who do not understand, that view started as a private view. Somehow it's moving to an executive view. And you know what executive view implies? The executive will use all her resources to see for the delivering of it. But one thing we must understand here, because it's very, very important to understand. You see, civilians don't just sit back and create states. There is no state in Nigeria that was created by civilian government. Go and research. Absolutely no state. Do you know why? Anytime we talk about state creation under civilian government, you should be ready for conflict. A severe one. That's why all Nigerian states were created by degrees. When the, when the military says it becomes Biden, you don't challenge them. Now, how much more a civilian government moving the country back to regional system? What you're seeing today is uh, a start-up point to either Nigeria survival or Nigeria destruction. So for those of you who think it's a document of uh, first reading, second reading, then it comes. No, 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 no. In fact, is a <laughs> is a debate that is going to last for years and why it's lasting is the, a lot of internal cohesions are weakening because most of you do not understand if they not oppose that view the root do the agenda will be uplifted on a high level and to those of us in the east We are also keenly monitoring. In fact, both regionalism and outright exit is definitely working towards the project we have at hand. Most of you will not understand. Or so most of us might not understand. So, it's very, very important you understand. The Russians are advancing. The West is uncomfortable with that. And they are putting every pressure. And for those of you who do not understand, Nigeria is the only country. Nigeria is the only country. Go put me anywhere. Nigeria is the only country that Russia have refused a direct relationship with. Nigeria is the only country within the Gulf states, within the Sahel, that have been, you know, presenting herself as an anti-Russia. And Russia also understands Nigeria too well. Nigeria is the only country that Russians are encircling geopolitically wise. No other country on the surface of this earth. Russia is not encircling. Somebody said my voice. Has my voice ceased? Russia is not encircling any other country as far as geopolitical race is concerned other than Nigeria. Go and check out what the map is. Then you understand better. So, that is what it is. We must understand all these things. We must understand the geopolitics that are being played out. 
we must understand it. And for your information, for those of us who do not understand, if there is anything that have amazingly happened to us, it is the existence of not just IPOB, but the caliber of men and women in the Directorate of States. Those men and women are noble men. They are thinkers. They are very amazing. So, what are we trying to say? We must keenly follow everything. We must keenly follow everything. Nigeria is moving on the design of Iraq. The West does not want to lose everything. They don't want, Britain does not want what happened to them in Sahel to happen. What happened to France in Sahel to happen to her in Nigeria. And they don't be surprised. Although I don't know anything about this, I want to say. But in diplomacy, anything is possible. Don't be surprised. Britain also might be trying to you know, find a way to build a relationship with the leadership. It's presumption. I'm not saying such a thing is at place because the geopolitical race, the tension is really alarming. It's really, really alarming. So um, we have done, done about an hour plus, an hour and two minutes. Uh, we'll be coming back in the evening uh, to also discuss certain issues. Uh, I think we might do that around uh, 8 or 9 p.m. Uh, then we look at certain issues. So I want to thank every one of us who brought out his time to do, you know, be with us. We have been a kind of busy for about three days now. Well, yeah, it's for good. We have been kind of busy. You know, that's why we've not really been, you know, doing what we ought to be doing or what we pledge to. So, um, We'll be doing our best to to keep us updated and above all uh, we are in a very amazing period of history okay okay um the sorry somebody just reminded me that the uh, the uh, dos members are coming Sorry, that escaped my mind. They are coming on air today, so we will not be doing that. But within the next uh, this week, we'll find a date. So please, uh, 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Maybe tomorrow 9 p.m. We we'll see what we can do. Do you understand me? Uh, because the members of the Directorate of States will be on air today. So from my end, I want to say thank you for your time and uh, do enjoy yourself.